Listen, say what you want about my singing. I'm pretty proud of that. You've already named your children? Bully. Bully. <laughs> really? I, have, I actually have two tattoos dedicated to them. This whole pregnancy baiting. If I did that, I would be canceled. She was degrading us, saying, um, you owe me this money for this performance. Jess would go, you, you moms, you better go yell at your kid and tell them what they're doing wrong. Are you friends with Colleen Ballinger still? Yeah. Definitely not so good cards in here. Have you ever walked in on someone while naked? And this is for six and up. Let's get into it. Welcome back to the Let's Get Into It podcast. We're going to be talking about Jojo Siwa and some of her most cringe and problematic moments. You guys may recognize Jojo Siwa from Dance Bombs because she was a child star on that show. She then became an influencer and now she's trying to become a singer, which I must admit, I actually went to her music video premiere like thing yesterday. I mean, she like went to a bar in West Hollywood and played her music video along with like three or four other songs. And it's super close to my house. So I was like, okay, I'll go. So me and my friend Spill Sesh actually went because we're like, you know, it's free. Let's go check it out. I actually still have my, um, oh, I hate when I leave these on. Don't you guys hate when you leave these on? This like ugh, 21 year old bracelet. I guess it was like an 18 plus event. Like usually they don't do these things at the bars. So I think it was 18 plus because Jojo Siwa, I mean, she's not even like 21, but uh, she was there and um, I took some clips. So we'll include a couple clips I took on my phone. I don't know what Jojo is trying to do. She looks like Kiss. She doesn't sound like herself. I mean, truly, me and Spill Sesh looked at each other in the bar when she would play a new song. She'd be like, you want to hear another new song? You want to hear another new song? And we're like, okay. And every time we looked at each other, Christy and I, and we're like, who's singing? Who's singing? Because it actually, some, I, I don't really like the Karma song, but the other songs, they sounded good, but they, I mean, they didn't sound like Jojo Siwa. So whatever's happening in her career right now is fascinating to watch because it's giving very much Jennifer Lopez energy. I mean, JLo thinks she's doing something so great, but it's just not reading that way. And Jojo thinks that she's slaying, but people are cringing. Let's start off by talking about the fact that yes, Jojo Siwa is a dancer. She was a trained dancer. Maybe her music video dancing isn't up to par, but really her singing doesn't measure either, which makes me believe that maybe her music is like AI generated. Jojo actually responded to accusations that she can't sing by posting a new video of her singing live on her TikTok page. Jojo may have first risen to fame as a dancer on Dance Moms, but the 19 year old has since gone on to become one of the most successful entertainers of her generation. Now, I wouldn't say of her generation, but maybe like as far as influencer TikTok status, because she was able to, again, remember those bows? Like she built an empire selling a product with her face on it, every kind of child's product. So she raked in a ton of money, which is what I realized last night when she kept playing these new songs. I was like, wait, she's invested a ton of money in this music career. Again, very much JLo. I mean, JLo invested $20 million of her own money for to flop. And I'm not saying JoJo is going to entirely flop, but if you look at the comments on like her music video release, it's not looking good. Now, this isn't the first time that JoJo has been doing music. Over the course of her career, she's released three EPs and eight singles. She's gone on tour before, she's performed on Good Morning America, and it was a very different JoJo that we saw back then. And now she's trying to do this Miley Cyrus like rebranding, and she's even said Miley's name when describing her career, which I'm like, oh, okay, wait, hold up, don't do that. Don't try to name drop Miley, because Miley was a very different entertainer. I feel like JoJo can't really equate to that quite yet. But however, in spite of JoJo's undeniable success, trolls often say she can't sing and now she's clapping back at them. Now, I don't know if this clip will get copyrighted or not. I have a feeling it won't because it is, in fact, JoJo singing. So it's not going to sound like the original track. But let's go ahead and react to some of her proof that she's given us that she's ready to be this singer like Miley Cyrus. 
Okay, hold on. <laughs> and I'm not a singer either. So I would sound just like this. Trader, like it's going to hurt. Does she not listen to that back before? You're still a traitor. <laughs> oh my god. Oh my god. I sound just like her. Also, I have a little bit of allergies. I think I may even sound a little better if I didn't. <laughs> Oh my god not her absolutely winded and completely red after trying to hit the note you go ahead jojo you try your best this person commented the red face gets me every time another person wrote jojo have you learned nothing this person wrote the voice crack eight little heart smiley emoji grace wrote in the comments i can't with the way that she looked around after like she was ashamed another person said that she heard a seagull sound while jojo was singing and then someone else asked is the progress in the room with us pretty much calling out jojo saying yeah you may have been working on your singing lessons and uh abilities and skills but we don't really see the progress here present and honestly i don't think that there's any reason to go ahead and bully a 20 year old girl about her singing but the problem is jojo's out here saying like i am this like i can do this i am amazing at this and then people are kind of humbling her nobody no, no, nobody no nobody no, no, nobody no, no, nobody no, no, nobody can change me Change me! Listen, say what you want about my singing. <laughs> and I know people will. <laughs> but doing that after 30 minutes of hardcore cardio, the stamina and the breath control that that takes, I'm pretty proud of that. This person commented that Jojo Siwa is a Gabby Hanna in the making. If you guys remember Gabby Hanna, major throwback. Another person wrote the search being, so on TikTok, the search, like suggested search was that Jojo Siwa is tone deaf. One person asked, how did she go on tour? And another person wrote, she's so millennial coded. This guy named Chase wrote, I do think I fear her. And then finally, Bailey said, do you think I could sue for this? Because people are just so absolutely offended by her singing, which again, I don't think we need to bully, but it's also like, damn, Jojo. Like, are you hearing the same track we're hearing? In addition to JoJo's singing ventures, we also see a new look, which I want to, at least, wait, I think we all know, JoJo C was a lesbian, right? Is that a bad word? I'm like, <laughs> lesbian? I feel like we always say gay, but do we, we, we never really say lesbian, do we? I mean, is gay also lesbian? Like, is JoJo C a gay? Or is she only just lesbian? I don't know. You guys can help me in the comments below. I'm the worst gay person because I'm like, <laughs> I don't even know the lingo. But I believe that she has come out as like a full lesbian. I mean, if you saw the Karma music video, there's a lot of humping in it. A lot of humping. And she also is giving very much um, like, you know, Tiger King energy, like kind of like starting to act like a bro which you know she's 20 years old she's figuring out who she is let her do what she wants but i guess when you are an entertainer and you put yourself out there it opens you up to comments so people have feelings about it the former dance mom star took to social media recently to flaunt a sleeve of patchwork tattoos considering these weren't accumulated over a period of time but instead appeared basically overnight plenty of others were also baffled by this supposed transformation so really the internet is convinced that Jojo is having a bit of an identity crisis as she slowly builds her identity separate from the glitter and oversized bows, which I told you guys last night, I went to a video premiere for her music video and I saw a bunch of Jojo fans and it was so funny to see some of it, like not funny in like a mean way, but it was cute and like interesting to see like the the conversion of the two worlds because they're like grown adults there in these big bows but also dressing emo and it's like the bow world is trying to meet this like rocker or like lesbian world it's just like something about it the mixture just isn't sitting right now there's another entertainer named g flip who jojo siwa is supposedly inspired by and why jojo got tattoos like this and a lot of people called out the similarities between these two although many were quick to judge jojo some were also trying to cut the former child star some slack 
One person wrote, why is it interesting? Lots of people dress up like their faves and JoJo is a big fan and a friend of G Flip. I think JoJo looks up to G Flip and I think that's okay, another person wrote. Around the same time the videos with the tattoos was being posted, JoJo also made a video parroting G Flip, suggesting the temporary ink may have been for the content alone. That said, it doesn't explain her decision to keep them for press interviews. Whether she's tatted up or not, I mean, who really cares? It could be temporary. I feel like I didn't see any tattoos on her last night, but I don't really know if her arm was exposed because the outfits that she's wearing, I mean, it's a lot. They're, I, they're not even outfits, they're like costumes. But one of the reasons why I wanted to take this video and make it into a podcast was because I wanted to talk a little bit about like what happened with the Rolling Stone article and how these girls have come forward and spoken about how JoJo is a bad person. But then I started to see these videos go viral online about how cringe she's been. So I thought maybe let's make this a podcast episode and talk about it all in one. And really what told me to include this cringe bit in the beginning is this next video because this video went viral for all the wrong reasons. I got a question. If you could have one heaven phone call, this is a random heaven phone call, okay? Nothing, nothing too serious. If it was serious, I'd call grandma, grandpa, uncle I never got to meet, someone like that. Unserious heaven phone call. Who are you calling? Personally, I'm calling the people in the Titanic submarine. The situation, the submersible, that whole thing. I'm calling them. My friend said she would call JonBenet Ramsey. I feel like that's a pretty good one. Who, who are you calling? What are we, what are we asking? Give me, give me, give me your take on this. Now, I think I have such a reaction to this video because it's just not the JoJo I'm ever used to seeing. We've got a tricep flex, which like, actually she had really good, like it was her triceps bigger than mine. Like I don't have, like she had like that shadow, not me getting up. Not me getting up. I'm over here so concerned. I think JoJo has a bigger tricep than I do. Um, but something about it just was not JoJo Siwa. This person commented, telling my kids, this is Billy Ray Cyrus. Another person added, JoJo, we're scared. This person wrote, that one drunk guy at the party. Leah added, this is the type of person to ask where her hug is at. Another person wrote, from bows to boxers. Here are even more comments. Back it up. JoJo, what is going on, girl? girl what is going on the stance and this person added this is so scary this person wrote I actually got uncomfortable about two seconds in and I had to scroll another person wrote telling my kids this was Joe Exotic who that's came that's who came to my mind right away it's the Joe Exotic vibe of it all and even though Jojo was trying to you know create some fuss with the tattoos trying to show them off and do the most um, they aren't real and ultimately she kind of won, you know, by doing that because it did get people talking about her And then I saw that video and I was like, wait, what? This is not the Jojo I'm, I'm, I'm used to seeing. No, because why is Jojo Siwa getting fake tattoos and trying to be G-flip so bad? I am convinced Jojo Siwa doesn't have her own real personality because every person she meets She tries to copy them for like a month or so But she's unable to develop her own personality because she grew up in the spotlight at such a young age she kind of just doesn't know what's real and what's fake anymore, so she's just acting out all these, like, personalities. And now she thinks tattoos are cool and she just wants to be G-Flip. She also got a Joe Dirt-ass mullet going on right now. I'm not here for JoJo Siwa's identity crisis. I'm gonna be so real right now. Now, I do want to give JoJo some grace on this front. I mean, we're gonna be talking about some more serious things towards the end of this episode, but, like, She's 20. Like, I think back to when I was in college. I didn't know who I was yet. So, like, you know, she's got to figure it out. We all have our cringe moments. Just not all of them have millions of views, you know? But around the same time, there was an interview that JoJo did with Access Hollywood that was posted on TikTok where she was showing the patchwork sleeve tattoos. And she claimed that she already had her future kids' names tattooed on her, saying that she wants to have a baby girl named Freddie and twin boys Teddy and uh, Eddie. Well, hey, first off, there's so many things wrong here. I mean, she's got the money where she can plan the kids. Like, she could buy them however she wants to, uh, whether they're a part of her, not part of her, adopted, you know, at any point. Um, but wouldn't she want to consider how her partner feels about the names or about any of it? But no, it's like she already has this decided. These are going to be my kids. Whoever my partner is is going to you know, subscribe to this because I literally got tattoos. And when I saw this video, I was taken back as well. You've already named your children? Fully. Fully. <laughs> really? I, have, I actually have two tattoos dedicated to them. 
Um, this one's dedicated to my baby girl one day. Her name is uh, Freddie. Then this is dedicated to twin boys, Eddie and Teddy. Um, <laughs> Freddie, Eddie, and Teddie. Freddie, Eddie, and Teddie. I got, I want awesome. three babies. I have my sperm donor lined up. Um, he, Wait, where's the sperm donor? You already donor? got it lined up? Is the sperm donor a friend? I will tell, I'll tell, I'll tell you. I make great kids. You. I mean, you um, <laughs> yes, is he here today? Maybe. <laughs> I, um, I, uh, I know who it is. <laughs> hey, it's not me. It's, it's, not, not, it's, it's, it's not, not me. It's not me. And it's a good one. You know, actually, when I first saw that clip, I was like, wait, what is she alluding to? And now that I think about it, I wonder, like, this is kind of freaky, but like, what if it's her brother? Like, would that make sense? Because then JoJo, she could use the egg of her partner if she's lesbian. And then her brother's sperm would be the donor who they would use to put it in the girlfriend because her brother and her would have the same DNA. Actually, I saw JoJo's whole family last night. We were right by them at the Ro Rocco's bar. So she did like a first hour at a smaller bar called Beaches. Then she went to a bigger bar called Rocco's. And um, we just, you know, we went to both to go see like what was going to happen. And all of her family was at the Rocco's one. And um, I wonder if it's her brother because her brother does seem to like roll around with her. Like seems like, you know, JoJo's the breadwinner and the whole family is just kind of like the entourage. Um, Ooh, is that normal? Guys, comment below. Because I don't want to have a feeling on it yet because that might be so normal. I'm not trying to make it weird. But like the brother being the sperm donor, maybe that would make sense why she already has that person lined up. This person wrote, Jojo, have you learned nothing? Another person wrote, Jojo, all iced out has me cackling. Nick wrote, the G Flip obsession is clearly real here. Okay, we keep talking about G Flip. I don't have a great understanding of who G Flip is. So let's go ahead and look. So looks like G Flip looks <laughs> like an older Jojo Siwa. Um, they, them. Okay, sorry if I, if I said otherwise, I just learned. Um, hmm, okay. I can see why JoJo's inspired, I guess, or how JoJo's inspired. Georgia Claire Flippo, also known as G Flip, is an Australian singer, songwriter, and instrumentalist. Oh, from Australia. Okay, so music. But back to these comments, because May wrote, these chains are crazy. Another person wrote, okay, the tattoos are insane. This is insane. This is wild. This person wrote, I told y'all JoJo was going to have her post-Disney-like crisis. This person commented, girl, put this in the notes app, which I totally relate to. I am a notes app person. I'm always making a notes app, like writing things, putting like thoughts, you know, information in there. Comment below if you're a notes app person. I feel like there's a lot more of us than we actually like to acknowledge. But like, yes, please put it in your notes app. Don't put it on your arm and expect your future partner. Like I really, you know, I believe in like soulmates and like there's like a destiny and like you, you can't really like outline the future that well to like really, it just, it like takes the magic away from all of it. And the fact that she's like already got these three kids, like already think about her brother, who's like the sperm donor. Like what if he already like donated? Like maybe he's already donated and they're on ice. This person wrote, I think I missed a few chapters. And then finally, another person wrote, when G Flip became a thing, she was like, oh, that's an option. I'll have that please. And just ran with it. And when you think things can't get worse, it does. I mean, there's a headline that reads, Jojo Siwa was criticized for pretending to be pregnant. Here's the truth about the bizarre rumor. Bizarre is, yeah, exactly the way to describe all of this. The rumor that Jojo Siwa was expecting a baby began in June 2020? What the hell? So she's 20? Wait, what? Because if she's, isn't she 20 now? So then wouldn't she be like a teenager? Um, but fans posted on TikTok that Jojo was pregnant and they claimed it was because of an Instagram post that she shared with a test with a positive sign on it. Um, what about like COVID people, especially June 2020? But of course, knowing Jojo, she is kind of a troll. So she took this moment and she ran with it. But according to Yahoo in 2022, Jojo talked about adding prenatal vitamins into her routine because she felt like they made her hair look amazing. <laughs> this didn't seem to contribute to any pregnancy rumors, though. Just a random ass thing to tell people. Like, ugh, weird. While JoJo responded briefly to those rumors, people began talking about her having a baby again in March 2023, about a year ago. That is when JoJo joked about being pregnant on Snapchat. JoJo Siwa pregnant. I fucking love JoJo Siwa. This, I saw this whole pregnancy baiting. If I did that, I would be canceled. I mean, if I took a photo, bloated as hell, beside a box of Pampers diapers, and said, I'm expecting, I would be fucking... Yeah, because isn't it like... Uh, frowned upon since so many people have like trouble getting pregnant and stuff. Yes. And do you know how many times in my life I was just sitting there needing views and I knew in the back of my head that motherfucker would drive me home, that the rent would be paid for a motherfucking year. But I knew that if I did that, I 
it wouldn't be good. It would. Why does JoJo Siwa get to do that and I don't? Although Tana may be considered problematic, I actually, I do enjoy Tana nowadays. I'm not that well versed in the Tana verse. So sorry if I'm speaking ahead of myself, but I kind of enjoy her personality. And she says it how it is because that's not a joke. According to the WHO organization, one in six people have trouble conceiving worldwide. And that's one in five women in the United States. So if you imagine five women in your life, like one of those would, I mean, statistically, would have issues getting pregnant. Pregnancy, parenthood, all of those things are very sensitive topics. And sometimes I think that like we as society could we villainize people too quickly. Like, I don't think Jojo is sitting here mocking women who can't get pregnant. Jojo's is clearly a kid who is trying to make light of a rumor and not trying to offend people who cannot conceive. I don't think she's even like old enough to really fully understand that. Maybe she, maybe I'm not giving her enough grace like, or not giving her enough. Um, Maybe I'm giving her too much grace because maybe, she, you know, she's been in the entertainment industry for a long time. She's had to grow up pretty quickly. Maybe she should know better. And that's what Tana is alluding to, that Jojo should know better than to kind of run with this. Well, of course, several sources noted that Jojo Siwa eventually said that she isn't expecting a baby. She explained that she will become a mother in the future, but she's too young to think about it now. Thank God. But I also guess she is thinking about it because she's getting these tattoos, allegedly. This person wrote on Reddit, why is Jojo Siwa not getting backlash for acting like she's pregnant for views? It's weird. Overall, Jojo has a very young audience, like actual children, and is giving the idea that it's okay to post pictures of being pregnant to get attention, which I do think that is valid. I mean, Jojo also did come from Dance Moms. There are a lot of young fans of that show. So Jojo is a role model, or at least she's tried to present herself as such, maybe until this new recent era where she's like, you know, she's a bad girl. You know, she does that in the video. She's like, I'm a bad girl. Little tongue. Little. I'm a bad girl. I can't do it like she can. She just like does a little... I'm a bad, I need to stop, we're, we're moving on. It's my third night with this partner. It's really fun, I'm happy, I'm having the time of my life. Cut to the next day. My dad comes up to me and he's like, so you guys had fun last night? <gasps> no! And he was like, last night you called me? <gasps> no! He thinks you're in trouble and he picks up the call and he's like, she's drowning, oh my God! <laughs> <laughs> well, she kind of is. <laughs> <laughs> Why does it sound like JoJo's only breathing out of one nostril? <laughs> so now I have a rule that no matter what, phones are away because I butt dialed my dad. Only could JoJo Siwa butt dial her father during an intimate moment. There's just some things that I, I just like. I just wish I never had that in my head. I wish I didn't, but I think it's time to switch gears and talk a little bit about some other controversies that JoJo has been involved in. I mean, these are some light controversies. These are her growing up and her being cringe, so cringe. But now I want to talk about her being controversial and her being problematic. This article reads, Jojo Siwa promised them pop stardom. They say they were thrown in the trash by her. Mm, she's got some people who are rallying against her. The past is coming to haunt her. Sounds like karma. <laughs> We've done enough promotion of that song. Jojo, along with her momager, Jesslyn Siwa, put together a new pop girl titled XOMG Pop. But after four members left, fans had questions about what really happened. Here is one of these girls speaking forward about Jojo. Leah Sanderson always wanted to dance, but it was never going to be easy for her. She was born with spina bifida, which is a congenital birth defect in which the spinal cord fails to form properly. This makes it very difficult for someone to do everyday things like going to the bathroom and just being comfortable with their body. Around 2013, Leah was six or seven and she started taking dance classes at a studio owned by Justin Johnson. Justin Johnson is actually a drag queen named Alyssa Edwards who became very popular popular from RuPaul's Drag Race and even had a reality show spinoff about their dance studio. Leah became a star dominating the competitive dance circuit despite her medical condition. Now in 2021, Leah was 14 and she had been working with Alyssa Edwards. She had been on TV and it seemed like it was about time for her to go to the next level. And that opportunity was Jojo Siwa's dance 
pop revolution. This was going to be a reality TV show where JoJo would help these young girls gain stardom. The band XOMG Pop would be positioned as the next big girl group bound for the charts. It seemed like JoJo was trying to create her own little kids bop and have these girls dance and have this reality show and just kind of create an entire brand. We're going to talk about the former members who have left XOMG Pop and why they had left, but here's a clip of Leah talking about her condition while she was a part of the group. Hey everyone, it's Leah here from XOMG Pop and I have spina bifida, so today I'm going to be answering all of your questions about it. Leah, what is spina bifida? So spina bifida is a very broad term. It's a birth defect that involves anything with the spine. So I actually have lipomyeloma meningocele and I was born with a tumor on my spine, but people could be born with like their spine kind of outside of their back. They could be born with tumors. It's a very, very broad term. And Leah, how do you manage being a pop star but also having spina bifida? That is a really great question. So it definitely can be difficult sometimes, you know, dealing with all of my health problems um, while also trying to live out my dreams, but I have amazing support system around me and uh, I do have to, you know, work hard and work a little bit different than people um, every single day. Now, Leah is a talented dancer, and she also has this condition, which is an interesting storyline and something that JoJo and her mother could easily exploit. JoJo's mother, Jesslyn, is a former dance studio owner from Nebraska, and she's played a crucial role in crafting JoJo's career. On Dance Moms, Jesslyn leaned into the role of cutthroat stage mother, bleaching her daughter's hair, crafting her trademark handmade bows, and often getting into intense confrontations. After JoJo signed with Nickelodeon in 2017, Jesslyn continued to work closely with her to help her fulfill her dream of becoming, as Jesslyn told the Rolling Stone, the next Hannah Montana. So it seems like Miley Cyrus's career, in more ways than one, have influenced JoJo Siwa's because JoJo wanted to be like Hannah Montana. Now she wants to be all like, bad girl, like Miley Cyrus. And you know, a lot of people looked up to what JoJo had built for herself, and including Leah, who had shared that dream with JoJo and wanted to join this show to be closer to her and to have a career similar to hers. Leah believed that if she won a spot in JoJo's pop group, it could help her achieve the dream goal of superstardom. Now, Leah's mother, Angie, had some reservations. Because Leah was a minor, Angie would have to leave her other three older kids behind in Texas to accompany Leah in Los Angeles. She'd also have to shut down the daycare center that she owned, but she and her husband, Cody, talked it over and decided it was too good of an opportunity to pass up. They even spoke about her condition that someone with spina bifida like typically can't do these kind of things. Like she is talented. She's a breakthrough case. Like we've got to let her try this out. So in early spring 2021, Angie and Leah flew to LA to appear in the series. The two years followed, according to Leah, were the exact opposite of what she had dreamed about as a little girl. Now Leah's family, as well as other multiple sources close to production, alleged that Jojo Siwa subjected the children to grueling rehearsals, sometimes foregoing school breaks and with meager compensation, so not even paying them right and making them work extra hard. They also allege that Leah was forced to work under intense physical duress, with Jessalyn, Jojo's mother, encouraging Leah to attend a video shoot just a few weeks after she underwent a spinal cord surgery. They also allege that Leah was forced to work under intense physical duress, with Jessalyn, Jojo, she was mom, encouraging her to attend and a video shoot just a few weeks after she underwent spinal cord surgery. In one instance, just days before the surgery, they alleged that Leah started bleeding through her belly button during a rehearsal for a performance that was hosted by JoJo. Rather than encouraging her to take a break, they say that Jesslyn told her to put a maxi pad on it so it wouldn't leak on her costume. <gasps> Ouch. I'm like looking at my belly button. I'm like, can you imagine your belly button like bleeding through? And they're like, yeah, put a maxi pad on it. Ah, oh, ouch. I don't want to ever bleed through my belly button. That sounds so painful. I'm sorry, Leah. So now for the first time, Angie and Leah are speaking out and talking exclusively to the Rolling Stone about their two-year stint in XOMG Pop. They allege that Jessalyn was overtly cruel to their young charges, calling them names and in one instance, shaming them for having a disability. JoJo, meanwhile, could be nasty and domineering, according to sources, a sharp contrast from her upbeat on-screen persona. At one point, they allege that she screamed 
screamed insults at the girls during a performance. They also alleged that she played a role in helping to build a cutthroat environment long after the cameras were gone, playing favorites and pitting members against each other. So really, it just sounds like JoJo and her mother are like Abby Lee Miller, but maybe even worse. Here's a clip of the girls talking a little bit about their experiences. We were doing our sound check and we were getting absolutely screamed at and mind you there's like how many people watching and we come off of the stage she keeps stopping the music stopping the music stopping the music <laughs> and i was like oh my gosh i'm literally about to go off the stage and throw up and then like no she did she i had to run to, I had to, run to the up. bathroom and it was so bad and yes i will get to that guys in a second about the headsets but we get off stage and she she goes you say this part because i don't want to say um Oh, she said you guys effing suck? Yeah. Yeah, she said they effing sucked. And then they... She said, you guys better have... You guys owe me $500,000. No, $200,000. Oh, no, 200000 $200,000. Something along those lines because she thought that we didn't do good in our... Um, Rehearsal. Rehearsal. And so she was degrading us, saying, um, you owe me this money for this performance. Not Jojo Siwa telling these young girls that they owe her now for the money that she's invested in this project. I mean, if the girls aren't good, then cast better people. But don't try to put the blame on these young girls and make them feel like you did when you were a young girl. Just because you were verbally abused by Abby Lee Miller and your own mother doesn't mean that these girls need to go through the same thing. Rolling Stone spoke to multiple sources close to the production of the dance pop revolution and the sea was the sources allege that the sea was and producers dangled the carrot of stardom in front of the young girls only to berate them and encourage them to cry on camera the moms and the kids would come home and have a candy basket and a nintendo switch in their hotel room after being messed with all day they said the highs were high and the lows were low and it seemed like they wanted to create that tumultuous relationship like that happened on um, you know dance moms between uh, the moms and the you know the instructor abby lee miller and the girls and everyone just fighting and having so much drama and resentment so they had to kind of curate that and kind of force these people into that you know environment to create the content they wanted to which is a lot of stress for these young girls who just want to be you know dancers and singers and pop stars but uh they have to fight on camera to get the clout to build some name recognition and jojo sees that that's why she wants to make this a success by causing all the drama when angie ray her concerns about what her daughter had been going through, the Sanderson say that Jessalyn, Jojo's mother, then fired Leah abruptly from the group. Angie said, Leah and I were in a dark place, a dark place for months and months, and I don't think we were healthy enough to speak out about it. Now that we've had time to recover and heal from it, we are in a place where we are ready to share and tell people about everything. Brian Friedman, a terrible lawyer who I have protested his office, who represents a lot of bad people, of course, represents the CWAS. And um, he said that these allegations are 100% provably false. They're actually saying that Angie is the abusive one here and that she's disgruntled and that she's the problem, which sounds like a Brian Friedman response. He's very aggressive. If he, rep like if someone is represented by Brian, in my personal opinion, allegedly, in my personal opinion, allegedly, in my personal opinion, in my personal opinion, then they're already guilty because he represents like in my opinion, only guilty people. And he's good at it. I mean, he can make things disappear. If you guys want to go to my interview with Perez Hilton, look at the moment where I asked him about Brian Friedman and watch his reaction to it. I mean, that's one of my favorite moments from this entire podcast series. Brian Friedman actually said by firing Leah, Jess Siwa was protecting the staff and other girls and their families from Leah, who I guess was such a problem that she needed to be terminated. Okay. Nowadays, the XOMG pop group is still out here and they actually are relatively successful, especially because of the merchandise rollout that was at Target and all of this clothing they were able to sell, which is kind of JoJo's specialty. There are currently seven members who are all between the ages of eight and 14. But what's interesting about this group is that four of the original winners, they have left. So why would the four original group members like 
peace out before the group even really saw some success. Angie, Leah's mother, has actually said that she wishes she did her research because the Siwas on surface level seem like great people, but she wished she knew better that they were going to be completely exploited and, you know, thrown to the wolves by getting involved with this. You know, I thought, oh gosh, well, Leah's next because she's over there puking, but she's trying her hardest. You know, all the dads were there. The dads were flipping out because they'd never seen their girls be treated like that before. And we're telling them to shut um, up. They cannot do that because we have no NDA, so we can say whatever we want. Yeah. Um, and all of this is true. Like, it's all, there's receipts. Um, yeah. So all of this is true. And so that was the most grueling experience ever. And what would always happen is Jess would go, you you moms, you better go yell at your kid and tell them what they're yeah. doing wrong. And my mom, like, obviously, my mom is tough on me. Like, if I'm not doing what I need to do, she will tell me she's straight up with me. But also, she's supportive and knows what's right for me and what's not. Angie said that she was surprised when she got off the plane and met with the team that the Dance Pop Revolution would be a competition show and not a making the band style reality show. Two sources close to production who spoke to Rolling Stone said that they do confirm that Dance Pop Revolution, Jojo Siwa's show, was being sold as a kinder, gentler version of Dance Moms. Quote, with what Jess and Jojo went through on Dance Moms, we thought they wouldn't want to do anything that would make the child feel a certain way or paint them in a certain light which they did exactly that but there were tensions within the cast and between the Siwas and some of the cast members almost immediately those two sources close to production say that this was due to the inherent premise of the show which involved children being pitted against each other in a competitive setting two of the contestants were frequently compared to each other by Jesslyn because they both had blonde hair prompting one of them to dye their hair mid-season two sources close to production also alleged that in a deleted elimination sequence, the girls who were cut from the show would be asked by producers to look in the mirror and watch themselves become visibly upset during their exit interviews. So these girls would not only be fired from the competition show and their dreams are shattered, but they had to sit in the mirror afterwards and try to make themselves cry so they can get some good B-roll of these girls being upset. According to one of the sources close to production, they said it was not a good day unless you made a kid cry. Angie Sanderson confirmed that she had heard such comment from a producer as well. So essentially, if they had a kid crying, if they had some drama, then they were, you know, having a good shoot day because they wanted to have those moments and to put these young kids through that stress. JoJo's mom was also allegedly verbally abusive during rehearsals, with one time Jesslyn berated a contestant with hypotonia, which is a disorder that causes low muscle tone. Jesslyn decided to mock her for being unable to move her arms and legs. She also allegedly made fun of her speech and at one point was mocking her. Of course, none of these scenes had aired but like all three or four like sources they had spoken to all confirmed this happened so who is jojo's mom to be sitting here like making these girls feel like absolute crap about themselves i mean i met her last night and i didn't think she seemed that mean so it's kind of sad to think that she has that that in her to like really go so hard on kids that aren't even hers. I mean, I would feel uncomfortable as an adult speaking to another person's child like that. Things got significantly worse once production for the show ended in September 2021 and the winners, including Leah, had transitioned to being a full-time music act. Leah and her mother allege and another source close to production confirms they largely had to pay out of pocket for food and transportation, often without being reimbursed. They were not paid for individual music video, photo, or social media content shoots. According to Angie, a copy of the recording contract provided to Rolling Stone said that the girls were promised $10,000 upon recording their first album. Yet yeah, Angie claims they only received a little more than $4,000 because she had to pay for an Airbnb where they would stay. Although the Siwas rented a house in San Fernando Valley in 2022 that would become known as the XOMG Pop House, which was furnished with brightly colored walls and a claw grab machine the kids did not sleep there or stay there actually angie claims after they would leave the house the airbnb that they had rented that would like you know serve as their content creation house they would then go and sleep on blow-up mattresses on the floor of kinsley's dance studio so they had nowhere to go here's a clip of one of the group members showing a little bit of this content creation house that angie is speaking of next we got this cute little xmg pop Sign so cute. We also got each of our names on here. We got Tiny, we got Kinley, Dallas, Brooklyn, Leah, and then Bella, which is me. 
<laughs> because of the situation that Angie and Leah were in, this was a dire financial situation, and they had to shut down their daycare in order to live in California. They feared that if they said anything to any of the producers or people in charge, that they would be sued or would be uh, caught up for breaching their contract. Two sources close to production of the Dance Pop Revolution alleged that the mothers were threatened on multiple occasions with lawsuits. The fact that one member, Kaya, had already been abruptly fired in fall of 2022 further solidified that no one standing with an XO OMG Pop was guaranteed. So really, if you piss anyone off, you're fired and they will replace you and they have no problem doing it. Angie said, you have to understand the atmosphere. You're not allowed to say anything. You can't question anything. You're living in fear that you're going to cost your child their opportunity or that they'll get fired or that you're going to have to get a lawyer. And none of us had the money. Angie claims that at one point she and Bella's mother started working directly for Jess, Jojo's mother, organizing Jojo's closets and scrubbing toilets in her home for $20 an hour. And she was actually able to prove this by providing receipts of PayPal transactions actions where they're being paid to scrub Jojo's toilets and then going back to their blow up mattresses. Additionally, rehearsals would last hours with little time available for school. According to a calendar shared with Rolling Stone, shoots for music videos like Disco Believer could extend up to nine hours with rehearsal call time sometimes being sent to the girls well after midnight the night before. Leah says that we would end up working a nine hour day with no school. And that doesn't comply with the California child labor laws, which Jojo's should be very familiar with that you have to you know continue school have some education and have a, you know a quick like time that is a uh, you know set off so you can go and learn and have these breaks and be a normal child but jojo and her mother didn't want normal children they wanted to really push them to their limits and get the bang out from their buck you know jojo had that two hundred thousand dollars that she had you know uh, invested and she wants it back unless these girls can prove themselves. After the reality show had ended, the girls were still expected to do a lot of work. I mean, endless hours of making Snapchat, TikTok videos, and YouTube content. There was no direct compensation for that labor. But supposedly the girls were given a little incentive that they would get $500 if they had made the most popular TikTok that week. So again, creating competition between these girls who are supposed to be a united group front, like a, a core banned and it really seems like jojo can't get that in her mind that you want them all to get along not for all of them to fight against each other leah said that she enjoyed making the videos at first but they quickly took on a more cutthroat bent everyone was pitted against each other the entire time she says there was still a divide during rehearsals leah claims that jojo would often encourage the girls to compare themselves to each other breeding an atmosphere of constant contention and presenting a stark contrast to her sunny public persona she said we're supposed to be a group and supposed to be unified that's what i'm saying it was like the show all over again supposedly they performed at the mall of america in minnesota and jojo was shouting at them through their headsets screaming you're sucking bring it up the energy is low you look sloppy this isn't good enough she said we had thousands of people watching this and then we had somebody in our ear screaming at us telling us we suck a source close to the situation also confirmed that this did in fact happen very nerve-wracking we were all so nervous like one girl actually puked backstage Stage, like right before we went on uh -huh. and uh, the nerves were high. the nerves were so bad because we didn't know what we didn't know how this was gonna go because of the night before and we knew that we were giving it our absolute all and so but it wasn't good enough for no. and so we go on stage and we have these little in ears I've talked about it before and we hear a voice in the middle of our performance saying you guys the energy is low y'all are sucking come on guys what are y'all doing like all of these things they're, she's like it's sloppy and we're trying to sing to like how many thousands of people that are at the mall of america our moms are like y'all did so good y'all did so good like it was really good and then just ask text jojo and ask her how was it and you want to know what she said sloppy she said it was sloppy even though the conditions were really bad, Angie and Leah felt desperate to be in this situation. Until Jess, Jojo Siwa's mom, couldn't handle Angie anymore. She actually texted her, Angie, I'm really tired of it. I work really hard. I've gone over and above for you and your kid. There's food at the house. They're not overworked. If you're going to work for me, you cannot act like an asshole. End of story. Angie repeatedly pled for Leah to stay in the group. Please, Jess, my daughter will hate me forever. She even offered to assign an onset guardianship, a requirement requirement for minors in California to her older daughter or to one of the other mothers so Leah could stay in the group. 
Angie was so shaken up. She's like, okay, well, if you don't want me around, just I could go away and I'll, you know, give a guardian to my daughter to be here. And so she can continue working because she did not want her daughter to resent her for, you know, raising her voice, causing a fuss, and then getting them kicked out. The thing is, we were just very, like, nervous about Leah being let go because of her disability and because she'd been in the hospital in LA, she had a lot of issues um, that fall and winter before the surgery. And so we were very nervous about her getting fired for that reason. And so we just did whatever they ask. Yeah. Angie said, I blamed myself because I felt like I was taking something away from Leah. But unfortunately, Angie couldn't say anything to keep Leah in. Well, I guess, unfortunately, but fortunately. And Jess, Judge's mother fired her through text message on May 6, 2023. She said, we have decided we will not be continuing to invest in Leah and she is released from the group effective immediately. She was let go from the group, but they noticed that Leah's image was still being used. I mean, on merchandise and promos. So they actually sent a letter to the girl group and said, hey, you fired us. You let us go. Why are you still using like my daughter's image to sell your brand? Angie noticed that her daughter's image was still being used in merchandise for uh, branded hairbrushes and costumes. So they sent a letter on December 6, months and months after she was let go, accusing them of using her image without authorization. A merchandising contract provided to Rolling Stone signed in June 2021 entitles the seven members of XOMG Pop to 20% of the merchandising revenue, which is about 2.8% per member, which is actually shockingly low. I mean, I'm not surprised because Jojo Siwa seems to be pretty cheap, but like very, very low that they could not live off of this and maintain a working lifestyle and living in LA. And then it talks here about the per diem at $35 a day, which is nothing. But we generally, when we went out of town, did get the per diem, the $35 a day, $35 for the girl, $35 for the mom, um, which still was not enough money to when you were traveling and stuff like that. And especially when I was using my own money to, um, you know, $30 is one merch bag. Um, and that's if it's not overweight. Um, there was one time I did get reimbursed for carrying the merch luggage, but the rest of the time um, I did not, even though I submitted receipts. So this didn't even cover me carrying the merch luggage. They should have gotten $10,000 advances per girl. This is strictly for merchandise. Leah's owed $20,000 just in merchandise advances that were never paid to her. And so were all the other children. As for Leah, she says she still harbors resentment towards the Sias, whom she spent two years of her life with. Leah claims that she hasn't spoken to the Sias ever since her mother got that text message from Jess saying that she was fired. And honestly, good for her for telling her story. But let's go ahead and switch gears a little bit because I want to talk about Colleen Ballinger. Because actually last night there was, like I said in the beginning of this episode... There was the premiere of the music video, and there was also an after party, a private after party at another bar that I didn't want to go to, but that, like, my friend Spill Sesh was like, oh my god, Colleen will probably be there, and I'm like, oh god, can you imagine seeing her? I can't imagine seeing her. But JoJo is a supporter of Colleen Ballinger, which, uh, you guys know, like, I was just at Trisha's house, like, we are very much not, I got, I got a Just Trish water bottle, um, we are very much not supporters of the Colleen situation. Adam McIntyre is a friend to the channel and the podcast channel. He, I was the first interview he did after it, like, not the first time the Colleen, but the second wave of it. I was like the first interview that he had done. So um, we've definitely been, I think, on the right side of history on this. JoJo hasn't. Headlines read, Jojo Siwa exposed for allegedly being in a Colleen Ballinger grooming group chat. The dance mom stars being called out with accusations that she was part of a controversial group chats that Colleen had with young fans. Several of those fans have recently alleged that Colleen shared inappropriate content in those chats and exhibited grooming behaviors to underage followers. The claims about Jojo's involvement come after she defended Colleen on a recent podcast with Howie Mandel. Which I'm not the... <sighs> I'm not the biggest fan of Howie. I don't want to say it like too. I'm not trying to ruin relationships, but like as a viewer, I don't know Howie Mandel as a person. As a viewer, not my favorite, but uh, JoJo's response here definitely wasn't cool. And de like it invalidated everything that Trisha and so many other people had come forward with. Speaking of friends, are are you and, and uh, 
if I'm wrong, are you friends with Colleen Ballinger still? Yeah, I. Uh, what do you say about? I've that, known man? I've known Colleen for since I was since I was twelve. And um, she's always been nothing but kind to me. Her family, nothing but kind to me. The internet can take a lie and run so far with it. So far, I know Colleen very, very, very well. She knows Colleen very, 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 very well, but still defending that. JoJo said, I think the problem is the internet was able to capitalize off her cancellation and they still are and they're still continuing to, but it's based off of lies. So which part are lies? Like Adam's part, Trisha's part. I mean, did you see what, um, what's her name, Swoop? Swoop channel. What do you guys think of the Swoop channel? She seems really nice. I want to like, I think her name is Spank. Is it like Spanky or something? I don't know what her name is. But uh, I have messaged her on Twitter. I would definitely like to meet up with her sometime. Sure, we could like talk about work things. But uh, she did a great coverage of um the whole Colleen thing. So was that the capitalization that JoJo is alluding to? There have been a lot of people on the internet who have gotten hit with this cancellation. And a lot of them I know. Some of them I don't know. This is a sensitive subject. Somebody who is affected by any sort of any 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 anything anything having to do with adults for real grooming is it's a very sensitive thing. Oh. The difference with Colleen and I is yeah. we were once I became her friend and she became my friend and mm -hmm. she became somebody that I looked up to. She's cool, you know, and I I think the problem is the internet was able to capitalize off of her her cancellation and they still are and they still are continuing to and it's it's not okay because a lot of it is based off of lies now ever since jojo did this interview the internet had gone into a frenzy i really think this kind of started people getting the ick when it came to jojo many fans and some alleged victims of colleen's behavior had flooded twitter with a wave of backlash about her defending the controversial youtuber this person wrote jojo siwa who colleen ballinger befriended when she was a minor is saying colleen befriending kids is based on lies another person wrote it's wild jojo is denying everything and calling these allegations lies like she wasn't in active group chats with us Colleen fans and witnessing it firsthand. Another person wrote, I knew there was a reason I didn't like JoJo. She's such a victim blamer. This is the second time that she's blamed the victim and has been on the side of a perpetrator. This Colleen Ballinger situation really brings out people's true colors. While a lot of people are against JoJo and saying that she's going way too, you know, soft on Colleen and, uh, you know, defending the wrong side. There are other people who see Jojo as a victim. This person wrote, Jojo is a victim, hands down. Abby Lee Miller, Shane Dawson, Colleen Ballinger, so many more in her life that basically imprinted on her from such an early age. Which there was a collaboration back in 2021 that sparked a lot of backlash because Shane Dawson, who has been known to be rather inappropriate, was seen with a young Jojo Siwa. Over the last few years, Shane Dawson has sparked quite a bit of backlash from the YouTube community. He addressed his accusations of racism back in 2020 and supposedly under investigation for manipulation, racism, and more that same year. This tweet actually ended up getting about 13 million views because people were really taken back to see these two collaborating together. It's just like two worlds colliding that we did not see coming. It's like a collab we never really asked for. Jojo Siwa gets called out for collaborating and hanging out with problematic people. First looks like she did a collaboration with James Charles. Then she also went and did a video with Shane Dawson. All three of these people are part of the LGBTQ+. But I did think it was for Pride Month until the internet started calling it out. There are plenty of LGBTQ plus creators that JoJo could have collaborated with this month, but she continues to promote these two. And on top of that, she's been seen recently a lot with Abby Lee Miller. And we all know she's problematic, but she's also been seen with Colleen Ballinger, who also has allegations against minors right now. This tweet pretty much sums it up for me. One person questioned, why would JoJo collab with Shane? Writing, do celebrities not have PR people anymore? Why would she make a video with that man with the demographic of her audience? Another person wrote, no, 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 JoJo, run. A third comment reads, JoJo Siwa went from everyone disliking her for no reason to creating multiple reasons for people to dislike her. 
Jojo has also come under fire in the past as well, with reasons varying from inappropriate questions during a kid's game to drama between Jojo and her ex-girlfriends, which actually last night there was a clip where in one of her songs, she's like, this ad lib part, this is about my ex-girlfriend saying that like one of her new songs, she's like talking trash about her ex. In 2021, Jojo received backlash from millions of followers after a TikTok user pointed out that her daughter's Jojo's Juice board game featured what she deemed inappropriate content for young girls. Girls. As I've said in this podcast episode, JoJo has sold a lot of products, and one of them is a playing card game for young girls. And one of the questions was, have you ever walked in on someone naked or had someone walk in on you? Have you ever taken money from someone's purse or wallet without asking? This is weird. I mean, it's weird that these are kids games. Nickelodeon was a partner within this game, and they stopped the game from being made and urged retailers to remove any remaining copies, <gasps> like a, a whole recall um yeah there's definitely not so good cards in here have you ever walked in on someone while naked and this is for six and up um have you ever never paid your bill at a restaurant have you ever been arrested have you ever taken money from someone's purse or wallet without asking stolen from a store learned the art of twerking and i just yeah it's not have you ever gone outside without underwear? A bathing suit doesn't count. So what is that, naked or just like free-balling it? Ah, uh, this is definitely not appropriate for kids, for sure. Jojo said in reply to this controversy, when I first saw this, I was really, really, really upset at how gross these questions were. So I brought it to Nickelodeon's attention immediately. I hope you all know that I would never, ever approve or agree to be associated with this game if I would have seen these cards before they started selling it. Well, maybe you should review things that are being sold under your name, or at least your mother, or hire somebody. And that's not the first time that Jojo has put out a product that needed to be recalled. In 2019, Jojo teamed up with Claire's for a makeup line, but the FDA put a warning out about the makeup kits through Twitter. Supposedly there were concerns for Abestos like in the makeup line, which is not a property you want to be in any makeup or near you at all. So Jojo put out a statement recently has been brought to my attention that there is a problem with one of my products in the clear stores. I want to let everyone know that no matter what safety is myself and Nickelodeon's number one priority in everything and in every product. And of course she can say that all she wants, but especially with how Nickelodeon has been, um, going lately, it seems like these, you know, Jojo and Nickelodeon and, just different people in the industry are so problematic that you can't turn away from it. I mean, she is like almost every year putting out products that have something wrong with them because they're trying to do a quick cash grab. So selling makeup to young girls that could have like poisonous effects in it, it's not okay. So Jojo Siwa often promotes her makeup and it was just revealed that her makeup contains asbestos. And for everyone who doesn't know what that is, it causes lung cancer. And the problem is she promotes her makeup on her YouTube channel to all of her child fans. And well, she addressed the issue, but on her second channel, which only got 186,000 views compared to her main channel with 9.8 million subscribers, which gets a lot more views. So basically, Jojo Siwa is trying to give her fans lung cancer. So Jojo Siwa is now canceled. Another controversy that Jojo got herself involved in involves one of her music videos. It was for a song titled Nonstop, and in June 2020, fans accused Jojo of using blackface in the video when one of the young background dancers was dressed up as a monkey. Now, Jojo responded saying that everyone was dressed up as animals and there was no such blackface here, but um, there's something off about it. There's something weird. There's something really weird about Jojo Siwa. Like, I feel like this is a case study. I think I've made it clear to you guys, I don't want to bully anyone. I don't want to hound on someone who's just trying to figure themselves out. But also at the same time, what a weird case, like from beginning to end. And there's so many layers to it. And things are changing so often that I really wanted to do a deep dive into the most problematic aspects of this creator because I have a feeling they're not going away anytime soon. So I want to hear what you guys think of this podcast below. What is like your takeaway? What story is the most shocking to you? How are you feeling? How are you doing? How's your life? How's it going? I really want to hit 200k on this channel. So I'm going to put in so much hard work for it, guys. We're going to get that 200K, but I hope you guys enjoyed this episode and please tune in next week for a new deep dive. I mean, if you have any topics, my email is sloanwellknown at gmail.com. So send me some ideas and I will cover them for you. Until next time, I'll see you in next week's episode. Bye, guys.